I'll say good morning again. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we're going to follow the same order of worship uh, as we do every Sunday. Uh, let us be in prayer for Pastor Walker. And we are, we are blessed today to uh, have Reverend Proctor. So again, we'll follow, we'll follow the, uh, the same order of worship. Also, if you if you come up and speak and you want to change the uh, cover on the mic, you can't change it if you don't feel comfortable. Again, let us rejoice and be glad in this day. Amen. My 
my soul wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from him. Yeah. He yeah. only is my rock yeah. and my salvation. Yeah. He is my defense. Yeah. I shall not be moved. Yeah. And God is my salvation yeah. and my glory. Yeah. The rock of my strength yeah. and my refuge is in God. Yeah. Trust in him at all times. Yeah, yes. Yea, people, yes. pour out your heart yes. before you. Yes, yes. God is a refuge yes. for us. Yes. <coughs> Hallelujah. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are alive. <laughs> to be laid in the balance they are all together lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. <coughs> God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this. That power belongeth unto God. Yes, also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. Yes. For thou renderest to every man according to his work. I've read Psalms 62 in its entirety. May God bless the readers, the doers, and the hearers of his most holy word.
to share with you uh, and let us understand the fact that one of the things that we can never do is stop God from doing what He wants to do. Somebody in the house this morning had God on hold, trying to make God wait. So often as we tell each other, we sometimes tell God, Lord, not today, but tomorrow. Amen. Amen. We need to remember, my brothers and sisters, God is an all-significant power. Amen. The word hold means to keep in a certain position or condition, to restrain or control, to keep back, and sometimes without vibration. Amen. It calls for a restraint of uh, conditions and forces. Amen. Many of us can look at our lives and at some point we have had some places in our lives that we have to say, well, not today, but tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. All of us are familiar with the fact that tomorrow is not promised to no one. Amen. 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 To keep in a certain position, condition, to sustain and to control or to keep back sometimes with our viral registrations of force. One of the most compelling forms of life, as we look at this text, mean putting people on hold is a mentality. Some of us just think we can outsmart anybody, even God, anytime, any place, and anywhere. Many times I'm sure that I'm not the only one in the building this morning that rose on a Sunday morning and, and said to God, Lord, I forgot, but I got to do what I didn't do yesterday. Amen. We must understand, my brothers and sisters, that tomorrow is not promised to any one of us. Men are known to restrain, to hold one's back. Amen. Suppression is one of the most devastating old tactics of humankind. I stopped by to tell you this morning that you can't put God on hold. You can't, you can't put God in a certain position. You can't put God in a certain condition. You can't, amen, straight restrain God. The reason, the reason, the reason I know this, God is omnipotent. Amen. He is omnipresent. Amen. He, he, he presents himself in a very peculiar way in every day's life. It is impossible to make God wait. And what we fail to understand is by his preeminent will, we will always be able to find God calling us to come to another stand. We have within our animated system on our telephones a thing that's called a module or hold button. Now we're living in a different day, but I remember in my grandma days, amen, when the phone would ring and she'd be talking and somebody wanted to call her, she'd have to tell them, hold on a minute, I'll get back with you. Just, just hold on a little while. We're living in a time now, my brothers and sisters, when we can watch the movies and turn on, amen, to another station at the same time on our television. Uh, technically, without a telephone, we call it a hold. Yeah, yeah, Anybody yeah. remember that? Amen, amen, amen. We need to be mindful of the fact that if we are talking to one someone and we hear the clicking sound of the phone, it lets us know that someone else is trying to get us and someone else, amen, is calling into our home. Our cars want our attention. We put the first party, amen, when we look about it, think about it, amen, on the phone while we answer the new party. 
most of the time, whatever party we desire to talk to, we will put the other party on hold. Amen. Sometimes we tell them I'll be right back. And yet it's 30 minutes later and we haven't got back yet. Our young people, even many of our seniors, have a different approach. Whatever party they want to worship or talk to, they put the other party on the whole. Yeah, yeah. And just leave them there until finally they get the picture and hang up the phone. Somebody been there this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, we just, we just, we just know, amen, amen, look at life, amen, and we find ourselves not putting our potentials in the way that they ought to go. We say that, that the brother, the sister, the mother, the father is not at home, or they all asleep until us, until no circumstance will Amen. Come to the point where they will find out that we are not telling the T R U T H. Here in the text, my brothers and sisters, Jesus' words to three would be followers. And we have to understand that even in this present day in which we live, we have, amen, folk that come to church. Amen. That don't really have God at heart. Sometimes pressures in life will send us to the church house. Amen. If somebody ought to say amen. amen. Many times we have other places and other things that we want to do, but when our life feels to do it, we don't know where to get the money from. Amen. We find our way to come to church. Amen. When 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 things are going well, our car loads are doing. We don't know how we're going to pay it. Amen. The first thing comes to our mind, well, you need to go to church Sunday morning. Amen. And let God fix it for you. Here in the text, Jesus' words uh, to three would-be followers as they tried to put him on hold to wait until they finish their task. Uh, what or who was more important to them than Jesus was? In our lives today, there are things that come upon us that we sometimes have to look and take our time and find out who is the most important person in the things that afflict us in our lives. And many times we try to handle ourselves, we try to do what we think is the better thing to do, and it still don't work out. And what do we have to do then? We have to turn and go back to Jesus, and he'll come to our rescue. If you really want good sounding advice, I recommend you to Jesus who is the sovereign power of this world. There are three men, three would-be followers in the text who had selfish reasons why they, would, they could not follow Jesus. Selfishness is one, is an almost characteristic part of the life of men. Jesus said to the first man, in essence, before you make your mind to follow me, count the cost. Many times people feel that they can just come to church because they just show up. Amen. Their troubles are going to pass away. But can I tell you that don't really work? You have to commit your life to Jesus and then let him see that you're walking in the right way. And when you can do that, then you'll make things go in the right direction. In other words, if you're looking for riches, fine homes, luxurious bank accounts, and the list could go on, <laughs> my brothers and sisters, an easy way of life, follow me, is not where it really is. I'm sure that uh, there's someone in the house this morning that can say amen. Yes. Jesus said to his would-be followers, foxes have dens, birds of the air have nests, oh, yeah. but the son of man have nowhere to lay his head. Yeah. Yeah. 
What I love about Jesus, he introduced you to follow him without false pretense. Isn't it strange how we can sometimes just make up how we are, make up how we look at it? Sometimes we feel that struggling to buy fine things and fine cars and nice dresses to put on and pet and coats, shoes to put on and suits to put on. <coughs> it will make us look like somebody that maybe we're really not. We're living in a world of struggling today. And one of the things <coughs> that we need to remember, in spite of all of the struggles, God is the way. I'm sure that there are some ones in the house this morning that can look at the scripture, look at the price that God is paying and say what grandma would say, Amen. Yeah. <coughs> Jesus said to the would-be followers, foxes have deeds, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his head. What I love about Jesus, he introduced you to follow him with no final pretense. In other words, Jesus said, if you follow me, it's going to be all right. Yeah. One of the problems that we experience, we want it to be all right before we follow. Yeah. Amen. We want to know what's ahead of us before we go in the direction yeah. that God desires us to go. Yeah. Jesus paid man. Uh, the greatest competition in pitching their demand so high that they can never be higher. It might well be that we have done great hurt to the church yeah. of Jesus Christ yeah. by letting people think that the church membership amen, need not make very much difference. Many people think that the church is just another move. <laughs> Somebody can say amen. amen. Another step in their lives. Who knows, amen, the truth. Oh, we are taught in our studying that we ought to remember that God is the supreme being yeah. Yeah. in this universe yeah. in which we live. Yeah. <laughs> we might have few people, but those who pledge their lives to Jesus would make all the difference in the world. <clears throat> Have you ever been to church on Sunday morning and it seemed just cold and dreary? Preaching, preaching, nobody saying amen. Amen. People, their minds are on other things, looking at other places. But can I tell you, when you come to this house, yes. you ought to come with your mind staying on Jesus. Amen. And can I tell you, when your mind is on Jesus, the preacher don't have to ask you, can I get an amen? Automatically it comes when the truth is told and when the word is preached, somebody that knows Jesus will say amen. Jesus was making an important point in everything that is a crucial moment. Amen. When, when, when we miss important moments, it is more than likely that important things never get done. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Amen. You have put off the day for tomorrow. Yeah. And for that thing tomorrow may never come. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This, this man in Jesus' story had a linking in his heart. Amen. To the point to get out of his surroundings. And like many of us, if he had missed, amen, this grand chance, this grand opportunity, it might never come to him again. Yeah. <laughs> In life, we discover that there are some things that we put off today for tomorrow. Yeah. Way down the line, six months, a year later, it never happens in our lives. Jesus was making it important in this point to tell us and to let us know, amen, that everything has its perfect moments and its perfect place in our lives. Have got a witness? <coughs> amen, amen. We must understand that it is very detrimental, 
Amen. To lose link with God. Yes. We must remember even though the storms are rising in life, God is still in business. No matter how tough it seems, God is still ready to make a difference. We're living in a time today when we see things that are going, amen, every way but the right way. Yeah. Yeah. See things that are not looking good in our everyday life. Many times we find ourselves looking at our bills, uh -huh. not enough money to see us through. We get disturbed, become, amen, distant in our lives. But God won't say when these things happen to you, just get on your knees. Yeah. Can't get on your knees, but steal away in that chair that you're sitting in. And tell God, Lord, have mercy upon me. And somebody in the house know this morning that God will come to your rescue. Jesus continues. Amen. 
man, but when his back was turned, you turn around and look at him, that was the crooked way in the blind way. My brother and sister is what the Bible is saying to us today is that we must continue to look forward and not look backward. Too many things that we look at yesterday that did not happen, God has a way of fixing them next week up the road. The problem with some Christians today is that their hearts are always looking back. Into the past. If I had done it yesterday, well, Christian Land says yesterday is gone. Tomorrow may never be mine. But Lord, whatever you do, keep me. I'll be saved in time. As we know in this text today, the preacher is telling us. Amen. At the side, seaside. And all of this is a part of our daily walk in life. Jesus encounters this last, this third man. Jesus replies, Amen, was totally different. Jesus does not say to him, follow, Amen, nor return. What he did say in this text, in so many words, except, amen, you look forward in life, except you're able to put yesterday behind you. Amen. Today will not be the kind of day that will carry you through in the same corners. When we look at this text, my brothers and sisters, amen, when we say and look at Israel, amen, God said, don't me on hope. Yeah. Amen. Don't make me, amen, wait. Amen. Thus shall have, I shall have no other God before me. Yeah. He said I am a jealous God. Yeah. Somebody in the house has been, amen, good God, long enough to know that God is a jealous God. Yeah. He died for us yeah. on the cross. And if he died for us, he wants us to walk the picket line. Yes, wants us to tell the truth in every day walk yeah. of life. Yeah. Look at this text, amen, and Luke enabled us to understand that we're living in a time that it always has been. That God does not want any lukewarm service. That I've got to Amen. No matter how much money you have, no matter what kind of house you live in, no matter what kind of truck, car you grow up in this morning, something in life, if no more than God woke you up this morning, there ought to be some happiness in this house. I came up in a time in the country, amen, when they come in, they come in crapping and praising God. Amen. They sit on those seats and they began to hit you can hear me a call. In my house now. Amen. But when I came up, there was a wood floor in the house. And you can hear those sisters beat on Sunday morning, beating on that floor. Yeah. Yeah. Now we have to beg you to say amen. And I tell you, God is still looking. God is still lying. Enoch did not put God on hold, but walked with God 300 years. Noah labored for God 120 years. Building the ark, Abraham left God, amen, looking for a city whose maker and builder was God. Moses, on the backside of the man of Midian Mountain, amen, said, let my people go. And my brothers and sisters, as I come to a close, we're living in a dangerous time. The church needs to be saying to God, amen, amen, not, 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 not to express ourselves and to want ourselves to be lifted, but there's so many people on the outside that so many neighbors next to you, amen, that, that, that are falling by the wayside. in the 
this text. I heard the voice of Jesus saying, Come unto me and rest. Lie down that weary ones, the head upon my breast. Because we have him to hold on to, we can sing the rest of that song. I found in him a resting place. Somebody in here tonight, today, amen. You might have went to bed last night wondering how you were going to pay your life bill. Wondering how, amen, mama, or papa, auntie, or somebody, we're going to be feeling this one who has not been feeling good on yesterday. But can I tell you, when you put it in the hands of the man from Galilee, he knows just what to do. In this text, my brothers and sisters, amen, the Hebrew boys, and the Pakistan, and the, amen, foreign furniture. They went in because they had been praising Almighty God. Yes. Somebody here may not have been in the physical fire for this, but your heat had been, amen, to its idea of tax. We need to remember that when trouble comes in our lives, we can just steal away while the trouble is all around us. You don't have to call it loud, you can just thank Jesus. As I close this morning, let me remind you that Jesus is still on the main line. Yeah. Tell him what you want. Yeah. Amen. Remember that they, they took Jesus and they brought him to that old rugged cross. Yeah. Amen. They nailed him. Amen. And stood him up on that old rugged cross. Yeah. As he stood there, they were standing around saying, well, just a few more hours.
Take it's time for me to open the doors of the church. All of us in the house this morning may be saved, but there may be somebody that's just fallen. Church of all to always open its doors to give that somebody that's fallen or somebody that's just been mischievous. You do know you have mischievous folk that come to church. Amen. Somebody may have had some bad thoughts on yesterday about somebody. You might want to straighten that up this morning. This is a good time and a good place to do it. So if you've never been baptized, and you figured out this morning that you want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. We're getting ready to open the doors of the church for you to come down this aisle and let God have his perfect way in life. As our choir gives us a song, I want to say to you that the doors of the church is open. If you're here, don't worry about who's sitting next to you. Don't worry about who may be looking at you. But just come to Jesus as you are. And Jesus will fix it for you. He'll change minds. He'll change personalities. He is powerful in everything that he does. Amen. No matter what your life is looking like, no matter what circumstances are being involved, God will make a change. So if you're here today, that's why I give us a song. We will let you come. Surrender your life to Him, or if you're just having some problems that you want God to help you through, it's a good time to come and let Him have His perfect way.
Walter, Reverend Proctor, members of Mount Calvary, family and friends. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a blessing to be with you this Sunday morning. Today's sermon will be posted on YouTube and Facebook today live before, at or before 1 p.m. Our Finance Security Committee will be at the church today from 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. to receive your financial gifts. We will have in-person and Zoom Sunday school today starting at 9.15 for adults and children. On Monday night, we will have our men's ministry conference call at 7 p.m. On Tuesday at 7.30 a.m. is our early risers prayer meeting conference call. On Wednesday at 7 p.m. we will have in-person and conference call Bible study. On Thursday at 7 p.m. we will have evening prayer conference call led by uh, Deacon Don Riles. And next Sunday, which will be September 26, we will have in-person and conference call worship starting at 8 a.m. Those are your announcements. Thank you. Amen. 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 